Greetings folks, Jason from Mishibashi Music, Shibuya in Tokyo here, and I'm standing here with Marzi. Now Marzi, your surname, I can't pronounce it, what Montezeri. is it? Montezeri. Montezeri. Yeah, okay. Marzi Montezeri. Rather easy, it's not that hard. Yeah, I guess maybe I should have just read it better. <laughs> English is kind of my first language, as well as Japanese. So, Marzi, tell the folks out there who don't know you about what you've done, who you played with, where you come from. Well, well, my name is Marzi Montezeri, and I'm based out of Houston, Texas. I'm a guitarist slash producer, artist, shoe salesman, just getting a habit dash. Um, formerly a PHA and Illegals, and now I have a band called Heavy As Texas. There you go. And uh, I have my own record label called Crunchy Western Records, uh, also from Texas. And i um, got an album coming out, a new album, April 20th, with Tim Ripper Owen singing. Yeah, former Judas Priest singer. Former Judas Priest. The only former, as far as there's Halford and him, that's it. That is true. That is that's true. pretty huge. That's big shoes to fill in your Amazing with him. talent. Yes, yes. It's actually, this album's called Marzi Montessori featuring Tim Owens. Awesome. It's a great record. And then, and go ahead. Phil, Phil Anselmo, let's go. Let's tell him. Let's make him excited. Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I used to play with Philip, um, I, I helped him get a solo uh, career off with a solo band, The Illegals. So for those of you who for some reason don't recognize the name Phil Anselmo, he was the original, well not the original, he was the singer in Pantera with Dimebag Daryl. That's pretty big shoes to fill, dude. Well, I actually didn't have to do that for like, okay, for, first and foremost, Dimebag was one of my best friends. And we go back to the teen years, you know? We've oh, I'm not saying you played in Pantera, but no, 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 with yeah. Phil. Yeah, in a sense, big shoes. So yeah, I, but you know, I'm my own style. Kind of, me and me Dime kind of came from the same school. Yeah. So yeah, but you know, yeah, that's uh, I would. Mm, let's see it. I don't ever. I will even consider putting on Dime shoes. It's not possible. Well, yeah. Okay. So oh, it, it, it's actually. But it was a thrill. It was a very cool thrill. It was a really fun gig actually playing, because uh, we got we we did play a handful of a lot of Pantera songs actually. Yep. We, we got to play a handful of fans. Well, I mean, dude, I've watched a couple of your videos. You certainly know how to play. There's no question of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, you can shred it lessons. up big time. You're doing great. I like, uh, have like, I like to have fun, man. Well, hence you putting a trim on your guitar, but we'll get to your guitar <laughs> in one second. What I want to say is I really respect the fact that I just made the, the random statement of Phil and Dime's shoes, and I noticed how on the back foot it put you and how seriously you treat the honor of his legacy. Absolutely. That's really cool Absolutely. to hear, dude. Like, Absolutely. massive props to you on that one. Thank good you, job. Because a lot of people would be like, yeah, man, I did this and that. Speaking the truth, only truth. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I, he I was admire a, he was that. a genuine that. individual. I will tell you that, you know, Eddie Van Halen and Randy Rhodes jolted my life. And uh, I saw Eric Johnson, like, on a complete accident, you know, play, and that freaked me out. And I've actually had seen Eric at one bad night. I've never seen Dime throughout our friendship, you know, through the clubs, through the big, he was like this entity. He was just like, you know, he was just so in tune with what he did. You know, it was just the most amazing thing. And Definitely. I got to bear witness that many, many, many times. I only got to see them live once. They came to Australia in 96, I think. I can't remember. I'm, what was the next album after Vulgar Display? I was suddenly blanked. I saw him on that tour anyway. So let's get into your guitar. Obviously, you, you, you play yourself down a bit, but you must be a pretty decent artist to have a Washburn <laughs> Signature Series guitar out, dude. Well, That's know, huge. A, yeah, man. This is a... Uh, it's a sexy looking guitar. Fruit of our labor here uh, that Greg Hertier and I put together. We, we, we designed this over a couple of years. And basically, what we went after was one solid piece of mahogany. You know, so I'll start on the back because I would really like everyone to see the contour. This is a guitar that when you stand up and play it, it's so balanced that you feel like you're sitting down almost. That's it is very balanced. This side it is of not shape. neck heavy. It's a very exciting shape. It's got custom Seymour Duncan pickups in it. And it's besides the mahogany, you just got ebony fretboard. You got a solid ebony fretboard. Beautiful. You got the Marzi signature right here on top. It's gonna make you proud. And then you got the you got the 12 fret inlay right there with the M. Nice. I, I thought it was 111, but it's an M. It's an M. I was about to ask you, what's the 111 for? It's an well, M. Actually, 111 is my number, so. Oh, well, there you go. It, and it looks like it, so. Nice. That is a beautiful piece of ebony on that guitar, too. Yes, they did. It's got a push-pull, so it'll, it'll you know, get the pickups to go out of phase. Right. So the versatility of this instrument is vast. because. So does it coil tap, or it goes yes. out of, it coil taps in the middle position? Yeah. Or is it coil tap everywhere? Everywhere. Great. Yes. I love push-pull switches. So yeah. where is the push-pull located? Right here. 
I think from watching one of your videos, this bridge, like this, I, I can't point. The closest pickup uh, volume to your main pickup is the bridge pickup volume, is this that is right? This is a bridge pickup. Now this was by design put here. Now we'll only have one tone knob on it, by, by the way. This guy doesn't have a tone knob to it. So it's placed right here because I do a lot of volume swells. Yep. So it's positioned right there as opposed to being back here. So I can attain it with my pinky. And here's my volume for this guy. So I can actually have master volume for each. You can do the Gibson thing. I yeah, it's really a tribute. Thing. Exactly. And and this tone switch is functional for this guy. So I want to get that guess who, you know, deep, deep tone. I'll just cut this guy back on nope. a clean channel. It gets very jazzy tone. Like again, very spanky, sparky instrument. And uh, very versatile at the same time. Very, very versatile. And it's very. got extremities to it. And the back allows you to actually hit the 24th fret with no interference whatsoever. Oh yeah, hell yeah, that's yeah, great. And you get there and you, again, you see the back of my neck, it's not, back of my hand. It's not, you, it doesn't. You can make it work. You can make it work. You wanna see something crazy? Can you hold that camera for a second? I'm gonna freak you out, watch this. Hold this camera for a second. You're not gonna believe this, you ready? Can you do that? 12 to 24? Well, I never. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love 24 fret sure. guitars, just so I, exactly. That's why I love 24 frets, because I got a long enough wingspan to do it. Look, almost did. Almost. It's all right, I'm just showing off, mate. It's just <laughs> one of those things. All right, well, look, I wish you all the best, man. I mean, I actually want to sell this guitar in Japan. I think this is a really cool instrument. So, Morse. I, I want to mention that, you know, for the hardtail lovers. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. We got this guy. Hardtail version. We got the hardtail version. Push pull on this guy, too. Great. And I'd like to mention the fact that Duncan Design Pickups. Duncan Design Pickups. Gotta love it. On the hardtail. Yep. On the imports, these are going to be 59s and JBs. They're not right. Duncan Designs, they're real Duncans on the imports. Very cool. So, so the, these are the Duncan Designs on the hardtail. The hardtail is made where? Can you turn it around? It should say on the back. Made in Indonesia, Indonesia. which is all good. And then this one here is made in USA, is it? Yes, this one's made in USA. Very cool. New, new custom shop factory. Moshi Nihonjin wa kono guitar kaitai naza nara kono guitar wa chou saikou no shiteib ne. Sugoku o moshiroi. Ishibashi gaki wa Nihon no Washburn Import kaisha. Moshi kono guitar chumon shitai Ishibashi gaki ten renryaku shite kudasai. I just told him that if the Japanese people want to order your guitar contact us and uh, we'll get some guitars in for them and they can have that cool guitar, man, because I think that's killing. Thank you, and it, it is, it is. I want, I want them to put their hands on it and see for themselves yep. what it's capable of. And if, get you, it. if and you're I'll watching, come, yeah. sorry, no, I was just gonna say, if you're watching this and you don't know Marzi, look him up, his YouTube, he's, he's very cool. Where can people find you on social media, mate? MarziMontessari.com or MarziMontessari anywhere, Facebook, uh, you know, any, any social media, just put my name Do in. Do you have a dedicated YouTube channel? I or? have a dedicated YouTube yep. channel, Marzi Montessari. Beautiful. Well, actually, it's Marzi Army. Marzi Army? Yes. No, well, you might as well have your own army, mate. You deserve Working it. Working on it. He's a good fella. I like this guy. I only found out about him a few days ago myself, but you know what? I think we're going to become friends. Oh, absolutely, Jason. <laughs> absolutely. All right. I think that's about it. We're done. Yeah, cheers. Can you hold that for a second? Because we've got to do our sign-off. Rock on. Rock on.